Hey guys, welcome to yet another story time, another creepy story time. Let me just disclaimer. Um, well, it depends like on what your version of creepy is, but like, um, this is a creepy event that happened to me and my friend, um, when we were still doing first year. Yeah, we're still doing first year. Okay, so let's get straight into it. Um, yeah. Okay, so first year, obviously, like, I'm still coming from home, right? Just moved into res. Um, and obviously, I'm like still very okay. Don't get me wrong, I still am quite religious. Like, my parents are we are Christians, right? Fine, but obviously, you know, when you just come like you just moved out from home, you still have like beliefs, uh, from home, like you know what I mean, younger Londo. So, yeah, like I'm still very much in my Christian ways, like you know, and anything that's God related, I'm there, you know, cool. So then. Um, obviously, after a couple of months of being at Rez, I haven't been to church now in a while. Church back from home. Um, so then my roomie, uh, if you follow me on TikTok, like, oh my gosh, this roomie has done me dirty before. But like, this, at this current point in time, we're still like very close. Um, so she was like, okay, no, listen, she's also a Christian and she's also like looking for a church and stuff like that. So she's come across this, um, group across campus and how about we give it a try? Disclaimer that this group is not from my varsity, like from my institute. Like, I don't, I feel like, you know, during like open day, it's so like people come and go from like various places. I feel like this group literally came because when we inquired at the institute, like at the end of this whole incident that happened, like, what, like, where's this group from? What is going on in relation to it? Like, do they know that it's doing A, B, C, D, E? They were like, yeah, no, this institute is not. I mean, this, um, group you guys are talking about uh this cult group that you guys are talking about is not part of the school it's not even in the system we don't know these people so these are people that just literally came during open day and they put their stuff there and they advertised themselves and they made it seem as though they were part of the institute right cool um so then what had happened was um okay so my friend came and she was like listen there's this church well, there's this group of like Christian people that approach me. They gave me their card and everything. How about we join this thing and we see where it goes? Because we're both looking for a church. It's been a couple of months now, and we're kind of a distance away from home. I'm like, okay, cool. Actually, you know what? That's convenient. Makes sense. Um, cool. So then they these people say say that they're going to be hosting a church thing and whatnot, and yeah, they would like us to come. We attend, ne? The first shady thing, I feel like the first red flag should have been when they made us wear these red not red and black sort of coats. Like, okay, if you are Catholic, Roman Catholic, or Anglican, those type of vibes, okay. Um, they've got, like, obviously there's uniform, like, in church for some churches. Majority of churches have their own uniform. But these cloaks are, like, super weird, guys, because, like, they were dark maroon-ish, and some of them were just black. Now, I have never, ever, ever seen a church where they just wear black cloaks that have, like, a whole hood and everything that, you know what I mean? So, it was just giving creepy, but they were like, okay, you know what, this is, like, part of, like, sort of our uniform, show us kind of respect. Um, so, yeah, like, just wear these when you come to the meetings, which was, like, okay, a bit weird, but I was like, okay, cool. Maybe, you know what, new thing. Why not? Second red flag was when we would meet um friday nights nah? okay at first it wasn't weird when they were like okay friday night service because i'm like i'm so used to going to friday night the youth services and stuff like that but this service wouldn't be like in a building or anything it would be like outside right so you had to come in your cloak your black or your red cloak if you didn't come in that cloak you'd literally be sent back like leave you're not wearing uniform leave like they were very strict about that right cool so you would come, it would be Friday night. Um, it was situated in like a sort of mini park. Um, but obviously it was after hours, so there would be no one at the park around those times. And it was like sort of hidden. Um, so that's where we would all meet and we would just sit down in a circle and there would be this man standing and these other two ladies. So it would be a man in the middle, two ladies next to them. And they would just literally... And the strange thing is they've never opened the Bible like ever ever since we've been attending like they would obviously say encouraging stuff and motivating stuff but there was never like a scripture that was involved with, with the stuff that they were saying now that i'm thinking about it like currently right now cool so then um okay now we've got the clothes that we're wearing and on top of that we literally like when you come 
also like when you're about to be like you have to take off your shoes and you may have to make sure you're not wearing any jewelry like if you have a weave like me i love weaves if you have a weave you have to take it off like you have to come in your natural state you have to wear the the cloaks that they say that you must wear and we meet at friday nights literally in um in the dark right and they wouldn't bring like torches or anything like that they would literally light i think about 10 candles they would, so it's pitch black and then they would light like candles and stuff like that so that's the only way we'd be able to see each other and they would say we are communicating in like the most godliest way by being in touch with nature and stuff like that and we weren't allowed to bring our cell phones and yeah it was very creepy and i had inquired the one time like okay cool uh can we bring our bibles and stuff like that they were like no no bibles as well um they believe in memorizing the scripture so we'll just listen to them talk and whatnot so i was like okay then we were banned from watching television we we're banned from um being in touch with like social media and stuff like that in fact we were encouraged to like if you have we were encouraged that if you have instagram you have tiktok whatever it is that you have remove it remove it it's not godly and whatnot and i was like okay i can see where they're coming from but to completely disassociate yourself like even whatsapp every form of social media and crazy enough my friend and i did it like literally we did it and that was the point where i feel like we were most closest because our friends didn't get why we were doing what we were doing and it was almost like we were hypnotized the way that we would do everything that was required from us by this like church cult sort of association thing and i think um we freaked out when there was a service the one time and when we went to this service, guys, uh, this guy, so the main guy that's there, let's call him maybe, what can I call him? Let's call him Pastor. So Pastor is like, listen, guys, um, we're going to do a thing where we are celebrating and we're just thanking God for life and whatnot. And so what we do in commemoration of this um, day as the church, they called us the church, um, I mean, you have to we all get like a little blade a clean blade they gave us fresh blades right and i was like okay where are they going with this and um, they took the blade and then the guy literally demonstrated he cut his hand and when he cut his hand like obviously blood came out and we all just stared at him like dude why would you cut yourself like where in the bible does it say that you should cut yourself keep in mind they just spewing whatever it is that comes to their mind they don't use bibles here cool so this man is like um yeah so in the bible it says that we drink the blood of jesus and his body and whatnot um so we have to physically cut our blood but now the crazy thing is when we cut our hands and whatnot um a cup comes around where everyone has their special cup right so when that cup comes around you have to put your uh your blood in that cup and it gets preserved but like it doesn't make sense. Do you know what I mean? So they were busy explaining that to us, the whole process of cutting our hands and whatnot. And this guy was like, the blood that he draws from his own hand and he puts into a cup, we would have to drink that. Because let's take it as though he is the representation of Christ. Why are we drinking people's bloods in church? Where in the Bible does it say that? Yo, ah, guys. And I feel like at that point, and that man, like, he had the expression of, like, if you don't do this, like, type of thing, you are in trouble, you know? And it got to a point where he got to me and my friend, right? Everyone else was skeptical, but they were doing it. Oh, my gosh, guys, I wanted to vomit when I was watching this. And by the time he got to my friend, my friend was like, she's not doing it. And this man was like, what? What in Alondo? Like, she's not about to do that. Um, He should rather kick rocks. Yo! Ah, guys, and everyone was looking at her in disbelief, and... I was like, okay, I don't know what to do in this situation because, like, it's creeping me out at the same time. But, like, you don't want to show that you're scared because you don't know what's going to happen right now. But I feel like at this point, we're able to put two and two together and realize, okay, that these people are not really uh, godly people. Do you know what I mean? It's some so, sort of, like, cult, I would say, because everything that's happening in regards to it is absolutely shady. And now we're being made to drink blood from a person that we don't even know. Like, what? So I just started laughing. My friend and I have this thing, like, if I start laughing, she can't help herself. Nice, nah, she's going to start laughing. So she also started laughing, even though she, like, she was creeped out and whatnot. And then this guy just looked at us, and we just looked at him, and I was like, okay, yeah, no, she was just joking, right? Cool. So then he was like, oh, okay, great. Um, Well, here you go. Drink my blood. Yo, yeah. Ah, sana, guys. Like, he... Honestly... And then there was this girl that started vomiting next to me. She legit started puking. 
And that's the way that this man got distracted from giving us like his blood that was in the cup. And the strange thing is, everyone that was drinking this blood name was literally I don't know, guys. It was like they went into an immediate trance type of thing. Like as we watching them, they literally going into like some sort of trance. Yo, ah, uh, guys, I don't even know how to explain it. So like now it's our turn, and I'm sitting there like, what is in this blood? Like what is in this blood? Because this man demonstrated with his hands, and he literally cut his hand, ne? And he put blood in a cup. But then the the blood that he's making us drink is not blood that we've seen him draw from his blood right it's blood that's in a bottle like it's, it's some dirty like looking bottle and like he's pouring that blood into um cups as he's going around and he's like drink 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 so like as much as he says it's his and we think it's his but obviously it might not be his do you know what i mean so like yeah no guys and this girl next to me she just started puking her lungs out so then they had to attend to her and as they were attending to her literally i swear my friend and i used that chance to get out of there and we weren't the only one i remember there was another girl that started running like with us at that point i feel like it just clicked in our heads by no man no this is creepy this is shady like something is off dude like something is off and we were running and when we got back to campus like when we go back when we got back to lower campus like the security was looking at us weirdly because it's they're seeing these three girls running wearing red and black cloaks like what the hell and we are frightened like we're frightened we don't even have our phones right and remember it's at night but like luckily we made it back to uh we made it back to campus to raise so like when we got to raise like i remember i was calling my parents and i was telling them about this and whatnot like Bruh, and my parents were like, listen, come home. You need prayers. We need to cleanse you and whatnot. Like, come, bring your friend. Just come. Let's go to church. Let's pray about it because you don't know what spirits have attached themselves to you from that whole thing that you guys attended. Do you know what I mean? And it was so creepy. And like, it's crazy how my mom was the one that reminded me of the story today. She's like, you know, since you've been telling like these crazy stories lately, like, share this experience that happened to you in first year and it's crazy how i've forgotten about it like i completely forgot about it because i feel like it was a right at the beginning like when we had just moved into race like that first couple of months so that was a long time ago and um, that was my first year but yeah guys and i feel like i don't know I, I i don't know what ended up happening to those other students that um were a part of that but i think we took the initiative to report it to the school and we um, tried to inquire about this group funny enough the school is like we don't know these people we do not know these people never seen them never heard of them this is the first time ever we're hearing about them from you guys and we've never ever even seen any other students wear these clothes and whatnot you guys are literally the first even going back through cameras and tracing stuff they have never heard of these people yo ah guys and i just feel like you know when you feel like you you saw a ghost or something that is not real and you're trying to make someone believe this thing it was a situation like that and it was so hard for people to believe us because crazy enough those people were never seen again after that day after we ran away those people were never seen again i don't know whether they ran away i don't know if they existed or they existed in our heads but i could have sworn that this was a real life event like honestly but yeah, I get guys. So thank God that I'm still here. I'm still alive to tell the story. But I feel like I've been through a lot of creepy stuff. Like, honestly. And the majority of the reason that I've been through these creepy stuff is because I'm very nosy and I'm very, like, forward. Like, if you know me, you know that I'm willing and I'm down to try any and everything. Which is the only reason that I ended up in this in that situation. But otherwise, yeah, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you so much for growing our family. Um, and yeah, thank you so much. Love you.